Welcome to video 17 in a series of introductory videos for InventorCam. This video's topic is turning and grooving operations. So the turning operation pretty much handles everything to do with the part other than facing and threading. So things like the, the outside of the part, the OD, the ID, the front and the back. So let's take a look at how that works. So let's start by adding a turning operation. We'll go to turning. And the turning toolpath is similar to the rest of the toolpaths inside of EntryCam where we start with the geometry. In the case of a turning operation, we're gonna use the wire frame that comes from the target profile. So I just click on the new geometry button. We can see that we're looking at the current status of the part. So I drilled out a one inch hole in the, in the ID there. So that's why that blue line stops right there. And we have faced it earlier in, in video um, 16 showing that we actually faced it down to that level right there. So I just need to choose the wireframe for this particular toolpath. I'm gonna to grab that line right there. The yellow, the yellow line shows that I've highlighted that, that one line, I've selected that edge, and the white arrow is my cutting direction. So in the direction of the cut, if I find all the chains I want, I can dictate the, the toolpath. Now, if I wanna just skip ahead and just say from the first selection to the last selection, I just have to click on up to entity and it'll find all those edges for me in the direction of the cut. So I just gotta click the green check mark to accept that, green check mark to accept the geometry. And I'm just gonna to go to modify geometry just to auto extend the toolpath. So at the beginning, it'll go right to that blue line. It's already at that line, but at the end, this tapered edge, I just need to extend it to that blue line. I'm just gonna say auto extend at the end of the toolpath. Okay, let's next go to tool. Now I defined the tool earlier in video two, so I'm just gonna use that same tool. I've already imported it to my active tool library, so I'm just gonna select it from the library, my CNMG 432, and by adding it to the operation, now I just have to tell it how it's mounted in the turret. So I'm just gonna grab the icon that does that, and that's it. The tool is mounted correctly. In the turning module, if you want to just make sure it's mounted correctly, it's going to turn in the right direction, you can just click on this visual tool icon and it attaches it to your mouse. So we flip this guy around, we'll see that the insert is on that side, giving me the proper rotational cut. Levels in a turning operation is just simply the safety distance. So at what distance does it retract away from the part before it repositions itself? So go to the technology section we can see that we have four modes, the outside, the inside, the front, and the back. So again, depending on which face of the part I'm trying to turn, I have the option here. Now it defaulted to the outside because of the chain. If I had done a chain on the inside, it would have recognized that and auto-selected the inside chain. But again, you choose whichever one would match whatever you're trying to do. If we go to the roughing tab, we'll see that the roughing types are smooth, stairs, and ramping. Main difference here is if you look in the bottom left corner, the smooth will follow that taper exactly. Stairs will leave steps behind on the taper. And ramping allows me to just zigzag back and forth if I had that type of insert, but I'm just gonna leave it as smooth for now. With each pass, I'll take 40 thou cut, equal steps. And I also have adaptive step down checked here as well, just in the case that there is a feature on my part that falls in between that 40 thou step. Pretty much, it would just continue with the diameter that it's on or, re, or, or add an additional turn just to do that feature. Below there is direction, one way versus zigzag. So if I have the type of insert that could do zigzag, I can select that option. But we are doing roughing. So in the top right corner, I tell it to leave the material behind in the X and the Z direction. And if I wanted to turn at a particular angle, I could just go rough angle, an angle from the Z axis. In the semi-finish slash finish tab, I can add semi-finish uh, uh, parameters and I can add finishing parameters. In this case, let's say I add an ISO turn method. So with the same tool, I'm gonna to do a final finishing pass on the rest material. So if there's any excess material in a corner that the roughing toolpath didn't handle, the finishing toolpath will do a little bit of semi-finish and then do the final toolpath. If you wanna just go right to the final toolpath, you can click on entire geometry. And always with turning in the finishing operation, we can add compensation. Under strategies, we'll see that if I don't want the tool to go down into that groove, I can just say non-descending. So if the tool doesn't have a proper relief angle or the, or the insert's not at the proper angle to go into that groove, I can just say non-descending and it will continue that diameter across the part. 
Break Edges allows you to add a chamfer or a fillet on any internal or external edge that's part of your selected geometry. So that includes anything on the inside of the geometry, but not at the very beginning. At the very, very beginning, that corner right there is not going to be recognized because that is the beginning of the chain. It doesn't know if that's an internal or an external chain, an internal or an external corner. And like other tool paths in turning, we have approach point and retract point. And by default, on this side of the part, it'll start from the right safety corner. So if I click on Save and Calculate, we'll see that the tool path is doing the 40,000 steps, and it jumped over that groove. Now, let's say we add a grooving operation to take care of that groove. So again, the grooving operation is very similar to the turning operation. It has almost the exact same workflow. Uh, there's just one change relative to the fact that we're doing it with a grooving insert. So I'm going to click on the new geometry button. Again, we can see our updated stock. I just need to do this groove right here. So I'm going to start from this line. And with my update entity, I'm just going to grab to that line. That defines my groove. Now, this side of the groove, that line is actually a little longer than, than the excess material that was there as we can see there. So I'm just going to go to my Modify Geometry, like we've seen with the other tool path, and I'm just going to modify it. So instead of Auto Extend to the end, it's already at the end. I want to trim it back. So what I'll do is highlight that zero, and then just click anywhere on that highlighted line where I'd like it to actually trim to. So it just trims to the, begin to the end of that fillet there. So I just click the green check mark, go to Tool, and I'm going to grab my grooving tool. Once I select that tool, I'll just mount it correctly. In this case, again, coming from the X positive direction. Levels, again, are just safety distance. Technology, very similar to what we saw before. Either an outside groove, an inside groove, a front groove, or a back groove. Roughing has similar uh, setup. You have your offsets on the right side here. And in terms of grooving, obviously that has a uh, special consideration. So we can say step down of a constant step down of a certain amount. We can have intermediate step downs, or we can just say single and it'll just feed right through and do the groove. We have our step over, set to 40 thou, and cutting order, we can do it as columns or rows. Direction, we can do side to side, zigzag, uh, middle to the outside, or alternating adjacent or across. So you have different, different directions you can take the tool. Again, it's based off of your preference, based off the material, and that sort of thing. And rough type, smooth versus stairs, once again. Let's go to finish. ISO turn method, rest material only, compensation. Similar to the turning. Where we'll see a difference is under groove parameters. So we can actually control the, the, the feed rates, the speed and speed with the plunging conditions. We can actually give it a percentage as it goes through the part. And of course, break edges, similar to what we saw in the turning side. Likewise with the link. So let's just do a save and calculate on that. And you can see there is our rows of, groove, of the groove uh, toolpath. And you can see it actually is starting from the right safety corner, but it plunges into there. Now let's take a look at those two toolpaths in a simulation just to see how they work. So I'm going to go simulate. In the turning module, in the mill turn module as well, we have turning simulation. That just gives us a cross section of the part. You can see that the updated stock shows that it's been faced. It has the drill. And I'm just going to do an operational step so we can take a look at the turning. So you can see as it goes through, it shows that. And if I jump ahead to the groove, we can see the grooving. Okay, so the turning and the grooving are very similar and they work off of the wireframe geometry. Any questions on this or anything else from Inventure Cam, just give me a call at 1-866-972. Sorry, that's actually 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this intro series. Thanks for watching.